A warm welcome to the fourth episode of The Swedish Deal. Gus Hansen is the guest of this episode. And fortunately, we have two parts. So this is the first part of two, where we talk to Gus about the early years and some more. This uh, podcast series is made possible thanks to our sponsor, Interdogs Poker. I really hope you will enjoy this. It is uh, early April, and I'm talking to Gustav Hansen. Gus, how are you? I'm fine. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Uh, I know uh, you told me that you're back in where you used to live for many years. You're in Monaco right now, right? What are you doing there? Uh, I'm in Monaco right now. It's uh, the end of a journey, you could say, or beginning of a new chapter, or however you want to put it. Uh, I've been residing in Monaco for 17 years, maybe 18 years, I think 2003, so sounds like 18. And uh, now I got, uh, let's call it a wife, not officially, because we're not married and not planning on it, but we got a little kid and uh, moving to Denmark. Simply, Denmark is is home home, and that's uh, where I grew up and uh, old friends, my roots, family, etc. So, uh, so um, goodbye, Monaco, uh, and welcome back, Denmark. Oh, that's nice. I, I know. I think the first real interview we did, you and I, was maybe back in two thousand five, six, something like that. Uh, I, I, what is the biggest difference? I mean, because you weren't sure that you would ever create a family. Do you feel feel good? Was it a good time now for you to do that? Uh, well. Like I, I probably said like uh, 15 years ago, what's the difference? Well, uh, back then I was probably uh, 32 and now I'm 47. <laughs> That's a big difference. Uh, but no, I was never sure. I always had it kind of on my mind that uh, maybe someday I would. And uh, I guess this maybe one day uh, arrived about six months ago. Uh, so the little, uh, little Arthur is six months old and, uh, no, it just feels like, uh, yeah, uh, things happen. Uh, I've been in the poker community, been traveling around the world and, uh, uh, maybe I'm not quite as crazy as I was, uh, 15 years ago and, uh, settling down, whatever that means, obviously settling down is, is a different word for different types of people but uh, still settling down a little bit I'm I'm still going to be traveling a little bit I'm still going to do some sports I'm still going to play some some poker hands or some backgammon games but uh, there's also a, a little kiddo who's gonna need some attention of course now of course we I mean a lot of people everyone who's been around for since back then know so much about you but <clears throat> There's also a new new generation, so I thought we'd just go through shortly. I mean, when you got into poker, it started with backgammon, didn't it? Back in the nineties, right? It it started with backgammon back in the nineties. Uh, last uh, last year of my gymnasium high school equivalency for the English speaking audience, uh, I started playing a lot of backgammon. I didn't attend class. I stayed up till five in the morning. Played some. A uh, small tournament and uh, skipped the first few hours of school, etc., etc. Still got my diploma, but I kind of was uh, getting the a little sniff of the of the gambling world. And uh, as usual, a lot of people in Denmark kind of take a year off after their high school, maybe travel a bit. And I traveled, but I traveled with gambling, and it was backgammon. Mm. And actually. Uh, I finished my high school in 92 and already the year after, uh, through a mutual friend, I bumped into um, Huxied. Huxied, really? really? Oh. Yes. So uh, he tried to play a little backgammon as well. And obviously he was a, a hotshot in poker back then. Uh, so uh, I, I beat him out of a little bit of money in backgammon. He beat me out of a little bit in poker. We played friendly stakes, but... We became friends, and I went to Vegas for the for the first time, I think, in 93, 94, 95. And I usually stayed at his place with his girlfriend. Mm. And um, actually, uh, kind of to hum along the story, in 96, me and Huck were out playing a pickup game of basketball. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, he's a bit taller, isn't he? Huh? He's, isn't he a bit taller? He's a bit taller. We didn't play against each other. He was way too good. But in a pickup game where you're like five against five. Ah, oh, okay. And we, it was Monday. Monday at 12 o'clock. We played till one o'clock. And then we took a quick shower and went down to the Horseshoe for the World Series of Poker. Wow. The main event was starting at 1 o'clock. And we almost got there too late. So they let us in. We were entry number 298 and 299 in 96. So there was just under 300 people. And I played for the first time in the World Series main event. I had about... 0.00% 0.00% chance of winning. I had no idea what I was doing. And as it turned out, my good friend, Huck Seed, uh, and I actually had 10% of him, he won the world championship that year. <laughs> yeah, that's a good, good story. And actually, I think a lot of my style was actually developed from watching. I mean, it was a big deal for me. I had 10%. I mean, First prize was a million dollars. I mean, 10%, that was a big score for me for back sure. then. Of course. Uh, so I was watching and uh, paying a lot of attention to what was going on. And and really, I think Huck obviously had some luck. You have to have some luck to win a tournament like that. But I think he was also that year the best player. He was really yeah. pushing people's envelope. He was testing people. And he just picked up a lot of, uh, a lot of antes, a lot of blinds, a lot of hands. And just building his stack, uh, pushing uh, the big stack that he had. So I think I definitely got some pointers from that to develop my own style. How much um, age difference is it between you? Because sometimes when you talk about a mentor, in a way, that you kind of describe him as, uh, how big age difference is it? And would you say he was your mentor early? Uh, No, I wouldn't say he was my mentor. The the age gap is only like uh, a handful of years, yeah, yeah. like four or five years. Yeah. So he he was a friend, and uh, I think that's one of my uh, my good sides. I have plenty of bad ones. We're not going to get into that. But one of my good ones is I I like to I like to watch. I like to pay attention, and I definitely did that. I mean, I probably played more attention to all the hands Huck played than he did himself. Oh. Uh, if you understand yeah, what of I'm course, saying, of course. I'm there watching. I don't have to make the decision. I can just uh, uh, take in everything I see, everything I notice. And so I think that was a very good learning experience for me. And also realizing that I played myself and I had no chance because I really didn't know the game that well. No, but I think maybe it was lucky that you found Huck because I think the way he played then had a big advantage to many players who played the old-fashioned style and it kind of suited your style from the start, didn't it? To be active. It, it definitely did. So, I mean, it's... Uh, uh, again, and uh, obviously, can uh, why did we uh, bump into each other? Why did we become friends? But again, uh, maybe we have... Uh, the similar mentality, et cetera, et cetera, and it uh, goes along well. We both like sports. We both like poker. We both like gambling. Uh, we were somewhat of the same age. So uh, in that sense, it was probably a good good match. I think I think it's been mentioned sometimes that Huck Seed was, was the unknown. A lot of people didn't know about his winning because it was so early and they didn't know his strength. Would you say, where would he be? Where would you rank him among the, the, the big big players the 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 great players uh well i i think uh, as you said really if you go before world poker tour before television really came into it uh nobody knows how people were playing how good they were i think probably the way uh, huck played uh, in 96 he was a bit ahead of his time and I was just lucky enough to be there, see it, watch it, learn from it, and 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 maybe take it a little bit to the to the television set at people's yeah. uh, back in people's homes. Uh, so he was definitely a good player. I think uh, he uh, probably had a little bit, which I have uh, sometimes described as a flaw of my own, uh, maybe a little too active. Right. Right. It's it, it's it's very good to. I mean, I think winning poker is aggressive poker, but it's not nonstop aggressiveness. No. You have to have, uh, there's a gas pedal and there's a brake. 
and if you forget to ever step on the brake, you're going to crash sometimes. Yeah, of course. And uh, I think I've definitely experienced some uh, crashes along the way, and, and so has Huck. So, uh, uh, but the good thing about crashing is uh, is hopefully you learn from that experience. Yeah, so, I think I, I think the timing for you as well, because <clears throat> this was just before poker even became something that people knew about that you could play in the way and, and no limit hold them came through and all that because when i think everyone remembers you from the very first broadcasts from world poker tour that came across the world and and we saw in the northern northern countries as well uh, what, what did you see the potential there in the, the tv broadcast did you have an idea that this might be really really big uh i don't think i think uh I think it has can be described as a bit of a lucky timing on on my part. Uh, basically, I had ventured into uh, backgammon, and I've always considered myself. And I, I hope I hope to think that I'm not the only one, but a very strong backgammon player. And I made a living uh, from backgammon uh, for uh, five, six, seven, eight years, and. I somehow maybe more saw the limitations to the possibilities of backgammon more than I saw the potential that poker had. So I was kind of wild playing backgammon and for, for high stakes or what was considered high stakes in the backgammon world. I was kind of looking for other venues, other roads, uh, paths to take where uh, maybe some of my... Uh, uh, my talents could be put to use in some way, shape, or form, and I think uh, with the bumping into uh, to Huxied and just uh, kind of getting to know the uh, the Las Vegas uh, from uh, mid '90s, uh, kind of introduced me to uh, the poker setting, and then uh, I just had like. I said lucky timing, exquisite timing. You call mm. it whatever you yeah, want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I think what, what, what's interesting, I think, because I don't know if, if this is the right word, an enigma in a way, because you you became such a character in the first years of televised poker. What was it in you? You think that made you suit the role so well? Because you really became. Of course, you had some wins, <laughs> which is a good thing. But what was it in your character and your your genes that made you? suit this role um well i think uh again i uh, i definitely created my uh, my own style of play uh and obviously the wins added to it but uh i i think i uh was definitely if we go like early 2000s i was not your prototype of of card player uh, back then it was still people a lot of final table being with guys 40 45 50 55 and here can, comes this young kid even though i was still maybe like 27 28 29 so i wasn't young young but comparatively speaking i was young uh relatively fit playing a lot of sports and then this crazy image the image just uh, fit well into uh, some young gun uh, gunslinger that came in from the this time from the north, not the west. But uh, and uh, uh, I just think I uh, over the past five ten years, I've really I'm really starting to appreciate a good storytelling, and I think my character was a good storytelling. Back then, it fit fit in perfectly. I was a tad bit different, uh, to say the least, from the rest of the bunch, and I got some good wins under my belt and so on. And uh, uh, the story just, uh, or the snowball just keeps on rolling. Yeah, I, I think also uh, one of the things that added to this for you that 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 w was good for you was the. I mean, I don't know when YouTube came through, but all these clips. It was just a couple of hands where you played three five of suit and bluffed and and it's kind of created some kind of 
you were kind of the the the, the dream that many were trying to be being that guy like a, like a film film character so what i want to ask you is because in the first interview i did with you for poker magazine you had a lot of girls around you you were dressed in a suit and you were and you, were you acting a lot or were you being yourself if you know what i mean were you adding on to the the the, the character uh that's an interesting question which i've never stumbled upon or been asked before and uh my answer would be not at all uh i definitely would say if you have a photo it's kind of set up and uh, i remember one i think after i won the first uh, one at the bellagio i'm sitting there with five uh, cocktail waitresses and there uh, five very pretty girls and it it just adds to the story and it, it's uh the high life and blah blah this and that and of course a setting like that is is somewhat set up but uh, my character is such a never really tried to play any role of anything i mean uh, and when you ask the question uh, the first thing that came into my mind is phil helmuth because he likes to enter the stage at the World Series in a gladiator outfit with with ten girls and this, and that's a complete acting job, right? And, and to be honest, I really don't think Phil Helmuth is that good an actor. Uh, so to me, it's it's a little bit silly. It's kind of a charade. Yeah. And the thing is, he's he's creating an image, and all the best to him because he's right. been good at, at creating an image, creating a story, creating uh, possibilities for himself. Yeah. And to me, there's a big difference in Phil Helmuth, the person, and Phil, Hel Helmuth, uh, Phil Helmuth as the poker player on TV. Right. Because to me, that's a charade, and I'm, that's not a, I'm not a big fan. But I'm actually, I would say, uh, outside poker, I'm friends with Phil Helmuth. We went to a concert in uh, in California. I stayed at his place, et cetera. So, and there you see a different side of him. So, so I would say he he can put on a, a yeah. mask and yeah. a, and put on a, a show, and then it's up to you to decide whether you like the show or not. You're right. I've never considered myself putting on a show. Maybe I you stage a photo op. Yeah, yeah, of course, I get photo, it. Or photo. But, 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 because I, I, in the early years when there were so many characters being built, one of them were Phil Helmuth, of course the the companies really loved when you were putting on a show and, and he didn't act for the people in the industry that much. He He flirted with all the other guys out there that were interested in poker and just started this cartoon character more or less. And he did, he did it pretty well, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's good. Okay, so so um, I mean, I remember I, I watched one clip where you played some tournament of champions or something, where you only you played against Chip Reese and all these really Doyle were there and Phil Ivey were there. Do you remember that tournament win? It was just a small small uh, tournament, I think, right? And you managed to win that. I'm I'm pretty sure it was like only a eight man field, something yeah. like. 125 buy-in, winner takes all 1 million, something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Doyle Bronson, Barry Greenstein, right. uh, Chip Reese, Phil Ivey, probably Johnny Chan, uh, what, something like that. Yeah. Were you were you then were you added to that crowd of merit, or were you added to that crowd for being a character that kind of spiced up the field? <laughs> uh, I was. Uh, I think I wouldn't even say I was added. I, I think I I kind of belonged there, right? Uh, as to the story uh, remains, if we if we turn back time about ten years, I met uh, Chip Reese uh, first time in '94, right? Because he was also a good backgammon player, right? So in that sense, uh, uh, we get to know each other, and and I was uh, friends with. Chip for a long time. I mean, I I know his uh, his, uh, his daughter, his son, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I've been around his house from 
when his kids were like two, three, four, five years old. Right. Uh, so they've always seen me, and I was the non-familiar uncle that always liked to play a little ball in the garden and this and that. So I got to know him. I was friends with him. And then the step when I took the transition from backgammon to poker wasn't that uh, far from entering the games of Bob in Bobby's room uh, or the high stakes games, which first time I played, maybe we played like four and 800. It was, I mean, still 25 years ago. And then right. uh, suddenly it became 500,000, one, two, two, four, whatever yeah, that big was. Games were, were played back then. Even four, eight was played. So, um, in that sense, it seemed like with uh, with my friendship with Chip and thereby getting to know all the rest of the players and my uh, early su success in the World Poker Tour, etc., it just seems like I was yeah. Uh, you you were one of the guys, of course, yeah. But it was it was yeah, it was interesting to see because you were very different from the others there. And were there any other? I don't count Canadians like Negrano. Maybe showed up quite early as well and he was canadian but i mean were there yeah, johnny chan was there and he i mean does he count like an american um johnny chan kind of counts uh for himself he he was part of the group not part of the group i think uh, johnny chan has always uh ventured his own ways and if he's in a poker playing mood he plays a lot of tournaments at the world series and if he decides not to. He doesn't show up at all. So uh, I I don't know Johnny Chan that well. Obviously, I'm uh, aware of his uh, card playing skills, etc. Mm. But but really, he's uh, always been a little of a mystifying character yeah, as yeah. far as I'm concerned. So uh, yeah. uh, I think I he also he, he, he know who I am, but I don't know the insides outs of uh, Johnny Chan. Yeah. It was funny because he also they all also got some some credit from I think was was it Rounders when that came out that kind of yeah, also yeah. built on the character a little bit. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, going from I know that. Do you want, do you want a little uh, story from uh, from Rounders? Oh, please shoot! Uh, because Matt Damon and Ed Norton uh, they uh, they came to Vegas. And they played in the World Series 1997. The year after your first? The year after my first. The year after Huck Seed won. And they played in the main event. They were very interested in stories about the poker community and this and that. And they actually invited us to dinner. They were mostly inviting Phil Helmuth and Huck Seed to dinner. But since I was staying with Huck Seed, I was part of the group. So we actually went to dinner with uh, Matt Damon at uh, Norton before Rounders. They wanted to hear stories and this and that. We were, of, of course, interested in acting stories, but they didn't let us talk about that. They wanted only poker stories and this and that. So we actually had a nice dinner at the top of the horseshoe uh, back in 97 be, before Rounders came out. So uh, uh, interesting in, enough Johnny Chan wasn't part of the dinner. But no, 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 of course. He, he could have been, uh, but it seemed like we were a little uh, well-knit group of five guys of, again, somewhat similar age. Wow, that's really cool. And, and, and kind of they, they picked your brains for details in their coming plans. What, yes. Could you say? They, they were kind of asking, okay, good stories, bad stories, uh, what to do there and then, and, and, and so on. I, I mean... I've, uh, I've met them both a couple of times, super, super nice guys down, down to earth. And I will say, now that you mentioned YouTube, it is one of my favorite movies to, like, just before I go to bed, maybe I watch a, 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 a five-minute clip from Rounders. I think there's some awesome, uh, awesome stories at the poker table, at the felt, et cetera, et cetera, in that movie. So I really enjoy that movie. Could you, could you remember from that movie that you could recognize in the movie something that came from your talk that dinner at the horseshoe do you know what i mean um, i i wish i could say yes but, yeah, but yeah. I, I i wouldn't it wouldn't go uh, as deep as that i i mean i just uh, 
vividly remember uh, that story. And as I told you, uh, might as well mention that part uh, of it too. Uh, because I was staying with uh, Huck and his girlfriend. And we went to dinner. And Huck forget, forgot to tell his girlfriend about it. And she was ba basically pissed at him for a week that she didn't go to get to go to dinner with Matt Damon. <laughs> and no more so so <laughs> that's a little uh, end of the story. <laughs> yeah, that's great. That's really good. I mean, we, there were some, some boom years there. And um, I mean, I would say I came into it when Joe Hashem won it uh, in 2005 and worked with the poker magazine, you know, the magazine there. And, and then... Uh, when, when did you get signed up for, for Full Tilt? Was, do you uh, remember what year that was? Uh, I'm not quite certain. I mean, I had my little venture in Denmark uh, with some, um, some poker site as well. Yeah. I was uh, with from, uh, from the start and uh, that... Uh, poker Champs, poker, right? Yeah, Poker Champs, which was sold to, uh, to Betfair. And then uh, I was, of course, uh, uh, friendly with um, Chris Ferguson, Phil Ivey, all of the full tilt players that was kind of uh, in full tilt from the from the beginning. And I was actually uh, one of the few silent investors. So I bought a piece. Ah, oh, I didn't know that. I can't can't remember if it was 2004 2005 so i bought a, uh, a piece which at the time uh, i can remember some people telling me that oh man that's insane i mean so much money for one percent of the company and this and that it, it turned out to be a good good investment in in the beginning and of course very sad on uh, black friday 2010 etc cetera, etc cetera. Uh, so so i was basically a silent investor and then I was added on as as one of the full tilt pros, but all the other full tilt pros that was kind of the part of the package deal when they were in from the beginning. Right. I see. I see. I see. So they were part of the quite a few of the, the players there were silent investors or investors from the beginning. What were they? Yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. I think that was the most uh, enigmatic or, or like vibrant time in poker when you did all these commercials is the group on full tilt all these players and that was like the the um the top of the of the glamour around it in some way what was yeah, it I, was it any what are the best memories from from the full tilt height like when it, when uh, it was i, I mean it, for for me again now i mentioned that i sometimes can uh watch a little clip from Rounders and this and that. And once in a blue moon, I, I uh, go on uh, YouTube and I see some of the old full tilt commercials. Right. And, and, and really, uh, I think it's fair to say that, uh, well, I mean, you can, you can make a video, uh, nothing wrong with poker stars. They've obviously done a fabulous job, but uh, I mean, and then they have a clip of, Ronaldinho or Ronaldo or something pushing some chips in the pod and looking excited. I mean, it's somewhat cheap TV compared to some of the commercials that were put together by Full Tilt. I think wow, wow. they were they were they were really trying to uh, catch, capture, captivate people and kind of get the uh, the inside feeling yeah. of what was going on and i think some of the the, the full tilt commercials were really really well thought out really really well done yeah I, one one that i just came to think of was one when phil ivy came home and his wife was with someone else in bed and he kept oh, the face yeah. you remember that one yes 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 <laughs> that's a poker face it was like I mean, chewing gum and just watching it with his stare uh that was there was so many good things uh it's 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 good memories and of course that's why I'm kind of doing this series uh, of talking to you guys that I talked to so much back in the day. And it was, it was some happy, really nice years there and, and, and kind of in a bubble, right? It was just yeah. traveling around like a circus. And this, um, Do you have mostly just nice memories from that? Um, I'm sure I had some bad days uh, here and there. We, we all do. But, uh, but yes, I think I... Uh, I really enjoyed it. I uh, 
just come to think about when we talked about uh, Hawk Seed and, and my own game that I wish that sometimes uh, back then, because I definitely had some success, um, I wish that once in a while I had uh, put my uh, foot on the brake and just uh, stopped for just for a second just to think a bit and uh, see, okay, where am I at? Uh, what am I trying to achieve? And I think I was a little bit too much. I can look back and, uh, and think, ah, maybe I could have uh, been a little bit smarter in some way, shape or form. I, I, uh, I definitely think there was, uh, there was some mistakes by me in a gambling sense. Uh, you could argue, uh, I could have uh, I could have gotten more out of it. Uh, I'm not only talking financially, but also in a, um, uh, in an experience way, maybe like in a, in a, an experience. Uh, so there's a lot of great memories from back then. But like I said, I think I could have uh, uh, put my foot on the brake and maybe take uh, take time to. Uh, kind of uh, see where I was at and and maybe made a different move here and there. But it's understandable as well because it was part of the deal in a way just to roll with it and be part of it. So it's yeah. I, I totally understand and it's obviously the, the adult thing to say and think. But in that boom, it was just like it's never going to end because it was like a fantasy land, wouldn't you say? It was like we're in fantasy it land. It, it it was a bit, I mean, uh, the whole, uh, I mean, obviously interesting that you use the word bubble because we have the 2000 and whatever, 2003, the IT bubble burst and in 2007, 8, the, the whole bank world crashed and in 2010, it was, uh, well, basically just the US government deciding that we're going to have them pay tax for the last seven years by stealing their money. That's the way I look uh, at it, but nonetheless, you can definitely describe it as another bubble that burst. Right. Uh, the whole uh, poker industry that was just making money because people wanted to play and people wanted to play, and and you were just taking your uh, five cents a hand, one dollar a hand, and money was rolling in at least for the poker companies, and obviously I was part of the whole uh, full tilt. Uh, so in that sense, uh, and, and the whole uh, being on TV, being a, a celebrity and, and so on. So it, it kind of was uh, a little bit strange that you uh, suddenly went into that. And, and again, I have uh, uh, my sisters, uh, two kids, my two nieces, they're uh, 13 and 15 now. And, and they can ask about, oh, have, so have you ever met DiCaprio? Yeah, I've met DiCaprio. Yeah, I've met uh, Will Smith, and yeah, Matt Damon invited me to dinner, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, so I have played a hand uh, with all these kinds of big, big superstars. I mean, like really, really uh, twenty-five million a movie superstars. Yeah. Uh, so, I've I've met a bunch of them, uh, etc. So obviously, uh, it was uh, some kind of. Uh, Access Hollywood, you could yeah. say. Yeah, I think also that, I mean, being in it, it was kind of in the deal to, if you would stop and, and, and be more mature, or whatever you want to say, Rip maybe back. maybe that wouldn't work then. You had to be yourself and be for just living in the moment. Uh, well, I know. I, I understand what you're saying. I, yeah. I still think I could have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yeah. A little reflection wouldn't have hurt. <laughs> <laughs> There's somewhere between here and here, somewhere. If you, you, yeah. you could go a little bit. I know, I know. All right, that's good, Gus. It's really nice, I mean, to look back at it because it was special years and I was just working in the industry, but that was also, I was also part of this bubble just traveling around. We were in Monte Carlo, Bahamas, and so on. So. It's quite kind of good memories, and it feels like it's not going to come back, right? <laughs> uh, it's uh, times are different. Everybody wears a mask nowadays, so uh, <laughs> it's 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 hard to to see that uh, uh, exact uh, time come back. And 
uh, we all get a little, a couple of years older. But yeah. uh, nonetheless, I mean, I think it's also uh, is it happens when it's a new thing. Poker mm. was still an obviously poker is an age old game, but but just the attention from getting into everybody's living room and so on. So it was just uh, very uh, very hyped, mm. and, and the hype. Uh, hype obviously created opportunities and uh, created whatever you want to call it. I call it access Hollywood, etc. So no, you're not going to have the same uh, momentum again. Yeah. But again, if people ask me, what was the time poker was most popular? I can't say for sure, but because I could easily be convinced that there's more poker players in 2021 than that that there has ever been before. Right. I don't guess. know the answers to to those questions, but I would think because I know uh, all online gaming industries uh, uh, took a big uh, they skyrocketed here with the uh, with the uh, corona because everybody has to stay home and right. they have to do something. So I could easily see there's more poker players in 2021 than there's ever been. Yeah. before in any any time yeah yeah that's what i say as well i have i have a thing for you now the, the, since we are we, we we haven't gone that far in the story i if you want we go on if you want if you feel like your kid is screaming and and you feel like we should do part two some other time from let's say 2010 and forward or do you want to go on uh well let me say a couple of things here first of all it's always a pleasure to talk to you. Thanks. We've always had a good chemistry. Uh, I always like to do your interviews, and uh, that's that's why I always stick with you. If you uh, ask for an interview, I'm I'm there. Uh, I think I put on uh, the potatoes before we started the interview. They're about to get done. I do have a six-month-year-old kid, uh, and the wife is in the background giving me the stare. <laughs> so in that sense I, w I would like to continue maybe we can do it tomorrow the day after um, and I'm sure you have a little bit to work with here yeah this is awesome I really liked it I never heard about the Huxid story and, and and you know since we have similar memories there there's always side stories to it and I, I really enjoyed this and I'm looking forward to part two and uh, as we did today we sort it out uh, tomorrow sure. or the day after and we go for part two then where we can pick up from where we left now for the potatoes have a good night thank you talk to you soon talk to you soon well that was a nice talk and we're really already looking forward to the next part in this series we want to thank intertoss poker of course for making this series possible see you soon again